This podcast is powered by Mu'jiza. And if you like and love the content and the videos that Mu'jiza is making, support is now in this Ramadan at launchgood.com slash Mu'jiza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Today, on this podcast show here in Reborn, we're going to have a brother all the way from South Korea. Yes, Brother Lee is a revert Korean Muslim. And in this episode, inshallah, he will be talking about his journey to Islam, his mistakes, and the tips that he wants to share with you and me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Habibullah Lee Jung Hoon from South Korea. How are you doing, brother? Wa alaikum salam, brother. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, I'm so glad to uh, meet you. So, uh, I'm really honored for being invited to your project. And uh, happy to share my thoughts with you guys. Uh, you know, it uh, feels like the last Ramadan was just a few months ago. <laughs> the new Ramadan already has come. But, oh. you know, uh, oh, everyone must be very excited to uh, celebrate Ramadan and get Allah. nearer to our Creator. But uh, at the same time, sadly, uh, because of the current situation, uh, uh, it's a shame that we can't have a social activity like Allah. we used to have it before in Ramadan. Uh, actually, that, uh, that's why I decided to join this project. Even though we are a thousand miles away and this uh, situation doesn't let us gather at one place, we are proving that all of those obstacles can't keep us from being one big family. Uh, okay, uh, my name is uh, Lee Jong-hun and you can, you can also call me Habibullah. MashaAllah, that's the that's Arabic uh, name of yours, I believe so. Yes, uh, yes, a sweet name given by my lovely brother from Kashmir. Uh, this name Habibullah, well, even though its uh, origin is Arabic, mm-hmm. but is is not that Arabic that much. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I haven't seen any Arab people who had True. this name. You, you're right. You're right. Yeah, actually, it's, yeah, it's actually more like a Pakistani name. True. Exactly. Exactly. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So he, uh, this brother was from Kashmir. Mm-hmm. And he uh, asked me, like, uh, what's the most important thing mm. that I think mm. in the religion or in faith? So when he asked me those questions, mm-hmm. the first thing came up with my mind was love. Okay. So I told him, like, uh, like I don't know, love. <laughs> and then he, he gave me this name, wow. Happy Bola. I live in, uh, in Seoul, oh, uh, okay. more particularly is. Uh, is a town called Itaewon. Okay. Itaewon is where the uh, central Korean central masjid is. So uh, it's a you can say it's a home ground or hub of uh, Muslims who live in Korea. Okay, mashallah. So there there are a lot of halal restaurants okay. and uh, like, uh, uh, what's that? Um, uh, Hajj. A travel agency, wow. and and we have Islamic uh, bookstore. Mashallah. And this brother, this brother, this uh, Kashmir brother, yeah. he is owner of the bookstore. So, so he he's my neighbor. <laughs> wow, that's that's Mashallah. May Allah bless your friendship and, and going to into deep or oh, depth into your Muslim life. What was actually the point that actually rang the bell in your heart? Look into the book of Islam. Mm, okay, so uh, like I said before, I was Christian. I already believe in God. Uh, we want one God. God. So that that was my uh, basic concept of uh, like higher being. Yeah. The teachings from the Christian Church mm-hmm. was not uh, satisfying. To say, if, if to me, if uh, I felt like. It, it didn't make quite sense. Wow. So, yeah. So, I always had some uh, of doubt mm. of some things. Mm. Uh, for example, I, uh, I pray, uh, I pray to God, to God, 
but I never prayed to Jesus because mm. I, I couldn't think that human being, again, uh, in this case, Jesus, yeah, can, can be, be a God. God. Yeah, yeah. That, that was my idea. Mm. But it is not the uh, uh, sound vision mm -hmm. uh, that a Christian mm -hmm. could have. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually dangerous thinking if you're a Christian. <laughs> my my major mm -hmm. in high school, so, uh, actually I studied in art high school. Okay. So my major was music composition. Cool. Similar uh, period. Okay. I was uh, researching music of Middle East, like oh. Turkish music, okay. uh, Arabic music, oh. you know, this kind of music. You, so you were interested, you, while I was researching you were doing music, that. Oh. and then uh, that led me to the religion of Milas. Wow. Because you, you, you can't uh, detach the Islam from the Middle Eastern culture. True, true, true. It's, it's very, yeah, very intact. closely. Yeah. Uh, that's how I found Islam. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was an, it, it was by a chance. Wow. I didn't mean to uh, find like uh, a new religion or new faith. Mm. I didn't mean that. So, it, was, it was just a chance. So I remember the moment that I uh, uh, first saw the verse of the Quran. Mm. It was uh, it was on the like website. It, it was Korean. Uh, it was in Korean language. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a uh, Islamic website. I don't recall the like name of the website okay. now. So uh, after I found out that Islam is the main religion mm -hmm. of the place mm -hmm. that I'm studying mm -hmm. because I was studying like music of Middle East. Okay. So uh, I got interested. So I searched like Islam <laughs> on the internet. In the past, I didn't know about a thing about Islam. Uh -huh. uh, I thought uh, Islam is a uh, local area. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, local religion mm -hmm. in some area, like, especially a desert area. Uh, and I thought they believe in a desert god whose name is Allah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a name mm -hmm. that the god has. So, oh, actually, it was just not just me. Mm -hmm. So many people think uh, Muslims believe uh, in a desert god well, whose name is Allah. That that misconception. Uh, yes, uh, it's a huge misconception. Is it t until today? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Uh, so I was so surprised mm -hmm. that they believe in uh, the same God mm -hmm. that I believe in. Mm -hmm. So it, it was uh, very, it was very shocking moment for me. Yeah. I realized that Islam could be uh, totally different from what I believe. Thought. I found the some. Uh, some information or, or, or information based on the Islamic doctrines mm -hmm. that it, it, uh, it was saying that uh, Jesus is not God. Oh, you were and searching about Islam and you found that Islam says that Jesus is not God. Yes. Okay. Jesus is not God. And it he agreed with human. you. And you agree with it. Yes, but because that, that's, that was the idea that uh, yeah. I always had. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so it's connecting now. Yeah. yeah it's connecting, right? Yeah. yeah. MashaAllah. And, and there were several things, so uh, most of the things that uh, I was not uh, satisfied uh, from the Christian doctrine. But in Islam, it's, uh, it, it's explained yeah. totally different, mm -hmm. differently. True. The, uh, it's saying Jesus didn't die. True. And yeah. There is no such thing as original sin. Yeah. Adam and Hawa yeah. uh, was uh, forgiven. Yeah. And even if they were not forgiven, that sin cannot be our sin. True. Okay. It was the yeah, teaching of uh, the Quran. Okay. So I was so amazed. And it, uh, I could kind of uh, feel mm -hmm. that uh, this book has something instantly. You went so, into the Quran basically after when you know about that information. You went. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh. 
so, so, so basically, this, all this doctrine must be from the the, uh, the scripture, the, sure. the, the Quran. Yeah. So uh, I thought there must be something mm-hmm. in this book. Mm-hmm. So uh, I researched more, decided to read some verse of Quran, and the very first verse of uh, the Quran that yeah. uh, I uh, yeah. ever seen wow. was a verse in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. Wow. It was saying uh, there is there is no compulsion in the religion. Beautiful. The the light or uh, the truth yeah. uh, always distinguished from the darkness yes, or true. error. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, at that time, I didn't know uh, anything about uh, uh, tafsir or uh, interpretation. Mm. So what what I did is this. Uh, I took that verse personally, wow. based on my uh, background, my experience. Mm. So it felt like the 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 author of the book uh. is actually talking to me. Wow. It's up to you whether you, wanted... uh, you believe in this religion mm. or just leave this place. Mm. It's up to you. I don't care. It's up to you. It's up to you, but uh, you should remember one thing: that uh, this thing, uh, uh, this thing that called truth, mm. has special feature. Mm. That is, it always distinguished from the, tr- the error. Yeah, true. Yes. Yeah. It, it, you will witness that moment wow. uh, in some point in your life. Akbar. If you witness it, take it. Allahu Akbar. Uh, that's how I uh, felt. That's, that's how I interpreted the, the, the verse. That's deep. I think, so, I believe, that, you know what, you're so you're right, brother. Uh, the, you know, this message is actually, all. it's all for born Muslims and also those who are just reverting to Islam. Mm. I mean, it's true that whatever, if you see, if you've seen the truth right in front of you, and if Allah has given truth to all of you and including myself, we have to take it, submit it's amazing. So, after you have put that verse into your heart personally, what was the next step that you, you taken to get closer to understand about this religion, about Islam? I took that verse. Mm-hmm. So, I decided to uh, accept the truth mm-hmm. if I witness mm-hmm. the, the moment the truth mm-hmm. uh, distinguished from the uh, darkness or, or the error. Mm. If, if the truth, uh, uh, if the truth is in front of me, mm-hmm. and I will take it. Mm-hmm. That that was my idea. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I started to uh, study Islam, study about Islam. I uh, oh. research. Did you did it alone? Yeah, alone. Wow. Uh, yeah, not alone with Chef Google. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I mean, Sheikh Google's what, what getting all the credit. Sheikh Google's <laughs> getting, Sheikh Google get is getting all the credit. I, I was alone. So it was I was like, alone. So, so you, you, know, you know, when you were uh, saying, when you were saying Sheikh Google, you know, sometimes it's a uh, Sheikh, something is a Shaytan. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. it was a Sheikh. <laughs> yeah, but that time it was it was Sheikh. It was Sheikh. <laughs> then I, uh, I became like. Uh, convinced wow. that this religion yes. has the truth, mm-hmm. and then uh, after a while, uh, maybe after not uh, not a year, but maybe after like uh, nine or ten months, mm-hmm. then I decided to become a Muslim. Then I took my shahada and what did you take? Uh, become what, Muslim. What did you uh, take your shahada? Which masjid? Uh, which place? And how did you actually? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, this that, uh, that, that, it, it it could be kind of hilarious because <laughs> there is no there's not much Muslim in my hometown. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but I wanted to be a Muslim. Wow. But but, but in order to become Muslim, that you, uh, you need at least two witness uh, person to witness yes. and and then you do your shahada. Mm-hmm. But and that time. I didn't have Muslims. Uh, there's no masjid in uh, my area. Hmm. 
Uh, so what I did is uh, I, uh, based on uh, one verse mm-hmm. uh, of the Quran, mm-hmm. uh, which is, uh, th- th- there's uh, some, uh, I don't remember exactly, but the, the message was like this. There, there are certain things that you need, you will need the uh, uh, witnesses. Okay. But, but if you don't have, if you don't have uh, your witnesses, uh, Allah is your best witness. Witness. Wow. So He is the best best witness. Oh. He's always with you. Okay. So I took that as so, and I took my shahada alone. Wow. In my home. Subhanallah. He considered started consider myself as a Muslim. And then after a while, I uh, I visited the uh, Itaewon, okay. where the central mosque is, yeah. and I uh, I did uh, shahada again yeah. with people. Yes, my shahada was uh, the first one, uh, the yeah, one yeah. that I, yes. uh, I did alone yeah, yeah. in my home. Yes, of course. I took I took the shower Muslim. alone. Wow! And Subhanallah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, well. Allahu Akbar. So, you know that moment when you took the shahada in the masjid, I mean, again, the official shahada that actually uh, announced that you're a Muslim and with the brothers there, what was the... I mean, of course, when a brother becomes a Muslim, Allahu Akbar, the masjid will... will you know, Allahu will be, be uh, you know, people will be, will be chanting Allahu Akbar and they come to you and they hug you and so forth. Was that the same... Uh, scene that you 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 saw that you experienced. You know, the uh, first thing you uh, to understand mm-hmm. uh, about Korea Korean society yeah. is that basically we don't have Muslims. Oh, so, okay, okay. <laughs> so it was very quiet. Oh, there, there are very few people. <laughs> okay, but alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I took my shahada and just uh, it, it was very quiet. Okay. Anyway. I uh, I took my shahada. Uh, I became a Muslim. That that's the that's a thing. Huh? That that that's the point. Yes. Yeah, that's a thing. You know, that's a thing. You know. Okay. Since after you migrated from Christianity to Islam, uh, you enjoined yourself to also share the 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 message of peace, the message that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants you and me to believe in and the rest of the humanity to believe in. What Mm. are the methodologies or the method that you actually use and utilize or have you joined forces with the Muslims in in South Korea in spreading Islam? So, like I said, uh, South Korea Mm -hmm. uh, is being more and more exposed to Islam. But, however, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. this society is still full of Misunderstandings yeah, of Islam. Yeah, yeah. So Koreans we do. don't have yeah, we do it. opportunity. Do. Uh, all they hear is media. Uh, sensational and negative news from mass media wow. or propaganda made from uh, the Korean church. Oh, so that... they, they they really do. <laughs> they wow. do it. They make propagandas, Yay. the fake news. So yeah, so. Uh, well, although we have uh, some Muslims, that actually they, they, there are very few mm. Korean Muslims and uh, they are doing their best to solve these problems and uh, raise their rights, yeah. but their voices couldn't reach the mainstream yeah. of the society. Okay. So, uh, so I've been working for letting people know about the true message of Islam okay. in uh, in a group okay. called Salam Nuri. Salam Nuri is a non-governmental organization okay. that named after the Arabic word Salam okay. combined with Korean Nuri, which means world. So, wow. uh, which makes up the meaning peaceful world, oh, I... Arabic and Korean. Yeah. And uh, Salam Nuri has been carrying out uh, the various cultural and educational programs in South Korea since 2011. 
Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah. The aim of Salamuri is to provide sound vision for Islam, despite misunderstandings and uh, all this bias that mm -hmm. is invented mm -hmm. by mass media. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are to share our cultures and uh, tradition with Muslim communities around the world. Sure. Uh, so we have several activities. Mm -hmm. So Salamuri is carrying out seminars, workshops, awesome. conferences, and research works. Uh, we are holding youth camps, uh, exhibitions, and learning language classes, uh, which is Korean and Arabic classes. Cor uh, Arabic. For everyone, for Arabic Muslim, classes. for non Muslim, for everyone, for free. Arabic as well. And, uh, yeah, Arabic oh, as well. Sweet Arabic. And sweet also Korean. Islamic class for Korean non Muslim. Wow. And uh, oh, finally, oh, publication of Islamic literatures. Uh, so we are doing many things. Uh, Salamduri is a is a kind of platform to introduce Islam everywhere in uh, Korea and a home ground for new Muslims. But sadly, all programs uh, have stopped because of the uh, coronavirus. Uh, but, uh, but hopefully, inshallah, we will do our best to resume our activity. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So. Now you are with Salam Nuri, if I'm not mistaken, right? And you're mm, Salam, together yes, spreading yes. the message of Islam, the message of peace. That's a very beautiful name. Uh, may Allah bless you and reward you and your, the entire team uh, with, with abundance of uh, forgiveness and also mercy in this dunya and also in the akhirah. I mean, I want to ask, what is your methodology of sharing Islam, the da'wah movement mm. that you are currently doing? Before mm. the spreading of uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 and also right now? Mm. I always want to share this point, uh, the methodology yeah. of uh, uh, the da'wah that Salam Nuri has been conducting. Mm. So, you know, every society has different context. True. So Agreed. we had to understand our, our people uh, and uh, learn what they need. True. Uh, what they lack, what they know, mm -hmm. what they don't know, mm -hmm. what they want, mm -hmm. what they like, and what they dislike. Mm -hmm. We had to uh, learn those kind of first. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and Korea is not uh, a religion-friendly society. Majority of people it doesn't have a religion. Well, they're just agnostic then. Or they mm, kind of. Uh, so atheism. Some uh, atheists some uh, like I said, uh, agnostic. Okay. But some believe, uh, some believe in God, but they don't know. Uh, don't don't believe in any religion. Okay. So anyway, but they uh, generally they don't like religion. religion. Wow. Uh, so Korea is not religion friendly society. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this kind of society, mm -hmm. the preaching on the street mm -hmm. or appealing to their emotion oh. could cause a negative reaction. Wow, it's it's different yeah, so, than in in the U.S. You know, you can preach people outside in public, like yes. in London. <laughs> in London, in Hyde Park, you can you can just talk about a topic, you can share about Islam. But in South Korea, is different. Interesting. Yeah, it, yeah, it's very different. Wow. So, so our approach somehow you uh, you will feel it's more. Uh, academic than that of Muslim uh, Muslim majority society. Okay. So we don't go directly go. Uh, we don't go directly to uh, like touching people's hearts and like God will forgive you or God will punish you. Some, something like that. That kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. We don't go to that. Yeah. So uh, we remove uh, our emotion at the beginning. And set up the steps to give knowledge. Uh, the first thing uh, we do is to provide people uh, Muslims' worldview. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Islam is this, Muslim is that. Mm -hmm. not, not like that. It is actually how Muslims view the world. Okay. Uh, so it's giving them an insight. 
so that they may think they could be another way of viewing the world. And next step uh, is uh, what and why Muslims do uh, based on the understanding uh, the first step. So we, we focus more on why than what, uh, because why gives us meaning of our actions. Wow, and deep. after these two steps, the first step and two steps, uh, non-Muslims already say, like, uh, uh, now I understand uh, why Muslims had to believe this and had to do uh, that, mm -hmm. and uh, it now makes sense. sense. They really say it after these two steps. So first, they uh, didn't know anything about Islam, so they couldn't understand why Muslims behave like that. But after these two steps, mm -hmm. it's very simple. It's first is uh, their view and then the reason of their actions. Mm -hmm. After these two steps, then non-Muslims uh, easily, uh, can, they can easily understand mm -hmm. how, why Muslims do uh, certain things. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, next step is so now we are done with uh, the value. And next step is uh, is about the ummah. But next, uh, this ummah case uh, is about uh, the the value or worldview that uh, this ummah has. So in this case, in our class, we are dealing with uh, Islamic civilization. So we teach them uh, the quintessence of Islamic civilization, which is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, namely Atahi. So uh, first step, first two steps explain how Atahi shaped individual Muslims' view and life. Wow, that's and deep. Now, that's deep. Yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> it's deep. Yeah. Uh, this point is about the whole, the worldview of the whole civilization derived from At-Tawheed. So, uh, and uh, the, uh, we, uh, uh, in this step, we are studying the principle of the civilization came from uh, At-Tawheed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so uh, what if you from Tawheed and the uh, principle of civilization from the Tawhid. Mm -hmm. So in this step, we are studying these points. So all this explains uh, how uh, Islamic civilization shaped and, and why it shaped like that in the past, uh, present day, uh, in the future. So they, they will have, the, the, the non-Muslim students will have that kind of uh, insight to, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and deep. then uh, the final step, the last step, is demonstrating the legacy of Islamic civilization in uh, various fields, uh, such as like, uh, politics, economics, science, math, uh, arts, etc. So, uh, actually, uh, not just in Korea, in people in it, everywhere, all around the world, people can easily fall into uh, an idea that everything mm. came from the world. They, in Korean education system, uh, like primary school, middle school, high school, uh, you will never uh, learn about like uh, history of any religion. Uh, yeah, non-Western civilization. So what, you I mean, mean everything is about. I mean, basically, there's nothing to do with uh, Western, right? Or I mean, is that what you're trying to say? No, uh, in in, uh, uh, in the school, mm -hmm. uh, the history tissue uh, about uh, the history of uh, the local history, like history of Korea, yeah, and history of the West. That's it. Yeah, well, uh, of course, they deal with uh, the basic uh, 
uh, some Middle East, some uh, desert, right? Yeah, basic knowledge of uh, the different worlds. Like, oh, okay, like uh, geographical. Yeah, Middle East. Yeah, Middle East uh, used to be like that. They had this, and Africa was like that, but not as deep uh, deep That's as the history of West and uh, our, our history. It's everything is about the West. Uh, it's about Western. Then. I mean, Westernization also in uh, influence. Uh, even the history or the methods of teaching in, even in schools or institutions. Mm. Uh, that's a very serious yeah. topic. I remember oh, yeah, so. when I was in high school, we used to learn mm. the history of, of England. And we, I mean, of course, uh, we learn about... Um, I don't remember to the name because it's not so important. It's a, it's a good thing to, to read, but you know, learning the Islamic history, it, it's much more valuable and it gives you some feeling of, of you know alhamdulillah the proudness of being in this legacy mm. okay, so uh, what we are doing is so people uh, their, their uh, view in mm-hmm. terms of the history yeah. their view are already so westernized wow they okay. interpret uh, and they read history uh, from an eye of the Western people. So uh, we provide them a new insight to read the history and let them know uh, that Islam always has been around us. Wow. So uh, Muslim scholars and Muslim inventors, mm-hmm. uh, there are so many Muslims done so many things mm-hmm. uh, like uh, a mental uh, clinic, asylum. Uh. was the invention of the Islamic world okay. and wow. and a, a modern hospital system. The first in, uh, university was found uh, in the, Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Sister, that to, uh, what, what, what else? Like the algebra? Advanced math, yeah, algebra, algorithm. Yeah, it's so amazing. Kore- Korean do know the word algebra and algorithm. Yeah. But they don't know Where is it from? Uh, how it is me was. <laughs> well, we're learning history, so, yeah, ladies so, and gentlemen. Yeah. We're learning history. So, so that, that's the point. Yeah. So we give them a new insight. Awesome. So, yeah, so uh, this uh, uh, whole process is one course. So it's our main course. Wow. So uh, we invite uh, non-Muslims to our weekly huh. Islamic class and we give them this Free, uh, as you course. mentioned, right? It's free. Yeah, it is for free. For free. Wow. So, Allah, uh, <laughs> okay. so during this course, uh, we observe non Muslim guests' reaction or uh, interest. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, according to their depth, uh, so yeah, so we are working uh, based on the basic structure of Dawa and uh, always try to be. Uh, interactive. Yeah, you know, <laughs> as a human being, me myself, I do make mistakes. Definitely, right? Mm. I know I fall in, uh, into loopholes, and you know the things that I've said, and and uh, the actions that I've done, and so forth. So, what are, uh, can you just share with us the or the tips from for, for Muslims like me and reverse mm. new Muslims to be to avoid making mistakes. Uh, mm when they're learning something new or when they enter the fall of Islam? Oh, sure, sure. So, uh, okay. Uh, before uh, mm-hmm. going into uh, the tips mm-hmm. from uh, my mistakes, I-, I want to uh, I want to share the basic steps to uh, Muslims like cool. for, for new Muslims brother and yeah. brothers and sisters. So after these two steps, uh, it, it will be much easier for them mm-hmm. and convenient for them to uh, leave as a Muslim. Mm-hmm. And after uh, sharing this step, and then I will go to the uh, talk about my mistakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, step oh. to Muslim life. Yeah. So, uh, this, these things uh, is what I want to share with my uh, new Muslim brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. So, so now you have just become Muslims, okay. and that's uh, that's the uh, that actually that that 
mm-hmm. itself is a big step. So yeah. you already took the first step. And uh, when you become Muslim mm-hmm. and you want to change things, but you want to be, you want to become a different and better person. Mm-hmm. So you throw away your past life and fill it in with uh, the new life. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, actually, many of us change things, but starting with the with the things that we can easily see, mm-hmm. uh, that to check ourselves. We, we want to uh, witness the moment that we, we uh, changed. So, for, for example, like uh, uh, quitting pork. So, you have been eating pork all your life, and certainly you, you quit it. Yeah. So this, this kind of change is so huge, so you can't it's help easy, witnessing yeah. your change. Yeah, true. Understand. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and how about uh, Ramadan? Ramadan is coming. Yeah. So Lovely Ramadan stuff. would be very new to uh, uh, our Ramadan's. new Muslim brothers and yeah. sisters. Yeah. So uh, if you think that uh, if there was any moment that uh, in your entire life that you intentionally quit eating, drinking, smoking, uh, and uh, having uh, sexual intercourse, from dawn till evening. Yeah, it, was there any moment like that? Of course not. Like, what, what would you do that? Yeah. Overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So, but, uh, yeah, but you want to change your life mm-hmm. and uh, you, want to, you want to change your life and you want to see it. Mm-hmm. You want to see that you have changed. So, you do all these overwhelming things. Uh, but uh, what, what I want to share with you is that when you become a Muslim, the first thing you need to change is not, how, not, not what you do. The first thing you need to change is not what you do, it's actually how you view. Whoa. So uh, if you remember uh, my dawah, approach, I mentioned that I gave Second point. Uh, people point. Yeah, a, a new a viewpoint. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah, man. A, a new way of viewing, a new way of uh, thinking mm-hmm. so that they can understand uh, what comes later. Mm-hmm. So uh, actually it goes the same to new Muslims, like uh, non-Muslims. So if you, if you don't understand who you are, uh, why you are here, mm-hmm. and uh, what God is like, uh, what He wants from you, uh, what's the relationship between you and your Creator. Mm-hmm. If you don't understand this, then all those changes could be uh, could be meaningless. Yeah, understand? Or it could or it could be a burden someday. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's see how. Uh, Quran was revealed. So, from 23 years of revelation, yeah, step by step. Uh, first, the first 13 years was not about rules and uh, codes and, and laws. Uh, In the first 13 years, Quran taught people uh, like who God is, uh, who you are, the relationship between you and God, and uh, why you have to live righteously, and what comes after life. Well, um, and you, you can uh, imply them into one word, actually, uh, which is atahid, the wow. oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perfect. Um, you know, the way you're saying this is like, yeah, you're right, you know, you're right. <laughs> we we this yeah. kind of method, way of teaching. After understanding atahid, only then, in the next 10 years mm-hmm. of the uh, Quran, start to deal with the law and rules. So, mm-hmm. this is how God himself taught people. So, after Hijrah, uh, people ha- uh, happily accepted and followed what they were ordered to do. Yeah. They, they were really happily, they were happy from their heart. Yeah. So, how was it possible? So, it's, well, I think, I do believe it was because their faith 
with the knowledge of that uh, hate had grown uh, uh, inside their inside mm -hmm. firmly. Mm -hmm. So they were ready to do whatever Allah. God tells them to do without doubt. So at their hate is the yeah. top priority of your Muslim life. See, without this, everything like, crumbles. Nothing else will just fall. It can be easily broken. And the next is uh, is Maqasid Sharia. Oh so, man, this, you are deep, dude. You are deep. <laughs> you are deep. No, it's, it's, no, it's easy. It's, it's actually I easy. I know, I know, man. But, no. but you, you, you have to move to Malaysia. No, you're, the way that you're thinking, you know, brother, guys out there, you, those who are watching this video and this, this podcast, you have to listen to this. This guy, this brother, I'm going to call him Brother Lee. It sounds more catchy, you know, Brother Lee. Brother Lee. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I can just make dua for you, bro. I love you for the sake of Allah. Oh, thank you. The, thank the, way, you. That you, you. the way you think, the way, that you, the way you approach people is like, you know, actually, this is what we need here also in Malaysia. The right people, yes, they say La ilaha illallah, they believe in Allah, they pray five times a day, they go for Hajj every year, they go for Umrah every each mo every month. I don't, I don't know where they get the money, but um, but they have something lack in their heart, the oneness of God. They don't have hope. Their akhlaq are, are not. They when when Allah when they see a command of Allah as a for example, like you say Ramadan is coming, even you know born Muslims will basically have issues. Born Muslims come Ramadan. Oh, I can't smoke. I can't do this. I can't do that. Right after the adhan of Maghrib, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Poof, cigarette comes out and smoke. They, there's no, as you mentioned, you know, they they are not ready to sacrifice whatever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has commanded. You know, it's amazing. Uh, okay, so um, after understanding a dahi, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, building your worldview, th uh, there's a thing you must learn first, which is uh, the purpose of do's and don'ts. So, uh, Maqasid Sharia is the uh, ground principle of the uh, uh, the principle of the law mm -hmm. that never changes, no matter what. Uh, unlike uh, ruling, ruling can be changed from time to time in order to achieve the purpose, uh, but the purpose itself is always there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so classical scholars uh, uh, agreed that the purpose of uh, Sharia is to give benefit to mankind uh, through uh, protect, uh, prevent harm, and enforce uh, these five essence of life, which is uh, life, faith, uh, intellect, mm -hmm. or you can say reasoning, reason, reason uh, family, yeah. Yeah. and wealth. Awesome. And uh, nowadays, modern scholars expanded the boundary uh, by adding uh, like justice, freedom, uh, human rights, etc. Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, it's, uh, no matter if it's uh, a five essence or ten essence or twenty essence, if it's an essence of human life, Sharia mm -hmm. is to protect them. Yeah, protect the, uh, those values. Yeah. So uh, it will be uh, a core principle of your uh, moral code, mm -hmm. uh, of your action, and of your uh, life. Mm -hmm. So um, no matter how a judgment uh, or individual action uh, look, mm -hmm. if it goes against the purpose of uh, purpose of Sharia, uh -huh. uh, that is not from a Sharia, but. If Absolute, those man. things uh, fully support the purpose of Sharia, no matter how it looks, if it supports the purpose of Sharia, it is from Sharia. So that, that, that's the thing. So uh, understanding uh, Maqasid Sharia gives you a correct view of mm -hmm. uh, ruling or, or, or your, uh, your do's and don'ts. True. So uh, let me give you an example. Uh, so... Many people will uh, ask you mm -hmm. about uh, hijab. I mean, True. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they are so curious about it. Mm. They, uh, like, they would like, ask you, what's that thing yeah, the, the head? <laughs> yeah, why Muslim women are ordered to cover their 
hair, their body, and everything. Yeah. And, uh, and many people uh, answer it because uh, Muslim so. women, you know, Muslim women cover their body uh, because uh, they are not allowed to show their uh, 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 sexual attraction uh -huh. in front of other genders. Yeah. But if you if you answer it like that, that means you didn't answer it. Answer why? It's actually how. Exactly. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So uh, let's see the purpose of the hijab. So mm -hmm. hijab is from Sharia. The purpose of Sharia must support the purpose of Sharia. So uh, what was the purpose of Sharia? Is to uh, protect, protect their life and faith and yeah. wealth and family mm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So hijab, uh, so, uh, uh, so the, the hijab what I'm referring to is not just women's headscarf. Yeah. It is uh, uh, it's general body covering for sure. both men and women. The purpose of the hijab, why? Why Muslims do uh, cover, uh, do where hijab uh, cover their body is to uh, protect their family and their society. Mm -hmm. How to cover their body? Yeah, I think this and, this this topic that you're sharing right now, uh, it's very crucial and vital and important that those who are watching this this pot, uh, this video or listening to this podcast learn and listen now exactly. This is the point that our brother Lee. Brother Lee is actually sharing a very important uh, point here. We should actually know why. Not just because, you know, as you mentioned, that, you know, born Muslim, oh, my parents are wearing hijab or blah, 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 and so forth. No, you should listen to this. Please continue and, and share mm. and uh, highlight about this. You, you, you should always uh, be able to distinguish how and why. Mm. So uh, in the Quran, mm. there is why and how. Uh, Quran mentioned that we should cover our body in front of other genders, but that's how. Mm. So you should always remember, and uh, uh, you should uh, be not confused with how and why. True. Uh, if you uh, if you are asked uh, by uh, non-Muslim uh, people, mm -hmm. then you should always think about uh, why, why the purpose of uh, Sharia. So. Uh, this is the one example, mm -hmm. and uh, there, there are several more uh, examples like, uh, you know, the punishment of the uh, stealing. Yes, yes. In, in the in the hadith, yeah. uh, it's it's so simple. It's uh, clearly said, cut the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. there's one uh, uh, instance uh, in the time of uh, I think it was a uh, time of. Uh, uh, Khalif uh, Umar Ibn al-Khattab. Yes, yes. Very beautiful. Uh, yeah. The one guy uh, brought his uh, uh, one, two, uh, I think it was two slaves to the courts uh -huh. and claimed that yeah, these guys stole, stole his uh, property mm -hmm. and they should be cut it mm -hmm. uh, with a, a hand. Yeah. Uh, if this Khalif focused on how only he will uh, surely he, he would have surely cut their hand uh, at the moment yeah but instead what he did is he uh, ordered to investigate yeah. uh, the, the situation and it turns out to be that uh, this master of the slave he didn't treat uh, the slave uh, right uh, uh, how to say right, mean, rightfully yeah, rightfully, they didn't treat him properly yes. and correctly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, these slaves didn't have any choice but to uh, to steal it. some properties and sell it and gain money and uh, buy food, uh, something like that. So oh. uh, they uh, condemned this master that he he did the wrong things. So why he do why he did this was he knew the purpose of Sharia. Allah. So in in this situation, this how, which is cutting hand, in this case, this uh, wouldn't support the purpose of Sharia. So that's why he didn't go uh, to uh, those punishments, mm -hmm. but, but rather uh, he showed mercy. And in this uh, case, 
is showing mercy with uh, support purpose of Sharia, and then it, it, it then it is Sharia. Allah. I, I'm I'm sorry for my, my language. I, no, no, no. You I, mean I, I should well. have, I should have <laughs> explain better. <laughs> No, you know, if, it's, you if know, it's, it was in Korean, I would have explained better. I, I believe, you know, when you're saying, um, <clears throat> when you're explaining in Korean, oh, definitely you'll be <laughs> very, <laughs> very smooth. But, you know, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair, because your message is, is there. You're sharing what you want to share. <laughs> that's, the main, that's the main goal. You know, Alhamdulillah, I learned a lot and, and I hope those who are watching this pod, uh, this video and also listening to this podcast will benefit and also implement in their lives. This is the main purpose. So, please continue with the uh, okay. the, uh, the benefits of actually understanding the Maqasid al-Sharia. Mm. So, uh, if you understand, uh, if you understand Maqasid al-Sharia, then your uh, view and your action uh, could be different from uh, uh, the time that you uh, didn't understand it. True. Uh, for example, like if, you're a, if you're a man, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Hadith mentioned oh, man, that right. uh, how man should uh, 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 dress up. It, 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 it says like from the belly button to your knee, knee, knee it, yeah. it should be covered. Yes, it's mandatory to yeah. cover this. And uh, uh. Uh, other side, uh, other parts of your body, it can be uh, shown. They, they they should cover their body because it is written in the Quran. Mm. Uh, man, on the other hand, there's no specific uh, dress code. True. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than the, the belly buttons uh, from the belly buttons to knee. Other yeah. than that, there's no specific dress code uh-huh. uh, for men. So they think they can Do wear whatever they yeah, want. W- whatever they want yeah. to wear. Yeah. But if you understand the uh, if you uh, uh, if you want to uh, protect your family mm-hmm. and the society, mm-hmm. then uh, you would think about which part of uh, men's body mm-hmm. is socially recognized as sexual attraction. So it, it could be very different from uh, society, society from society. Uh, uh, oh. For example, like his, uh, 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 is just uh, some assumption that uh. if these parts, it is socially recognized <laughs> as a sexual attraction. But uh, uh, I don't know who think who thinks this part is sexual attraction? But I, I don't know. But <laughs> it's just an example. So uh, my point is, uh, it's not that you should cover this, you should cover that, you should yeah, cover you should, uh, that. You part. Quran or Hadith doesn't say uh, specific how. Hmm. You know why, yeah, and you know the purpose. Yeah. Yeah, so you can act upon that uh, purpose mm-hmm. of uh, Sharia. Hmm. So I, yeah, I, I believe that, that, that was my point. I believe because uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us the. IQ, the mental, the, the mm. brain to actually understand. That's why there are verses in the Quran that also actually emphasize that Afarat Qirun, why don't you understand or contemplate? Because men are the human beings, they can actually understand and reason, as you mentioned, to, to take care of the reasoning. They, they know what is right, what is wrong, what is against, what could cause harm to the society and themselves and so forth and wealth. Awesome, bro. Awesome. So, like, uh, this is still fine, right? I can. Like pull my, I can pull the sleeves. If if it's okay in your society and it's okay, it's about to uh, wear the moderate. Exactly. Uh, just, so. Exactly. But this word moderate can be very different from society true. from society. True. True. So it may be in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the wearing like a, a tight shirt mm-hmm. would be very, like not moderate. Well, what about in South Korea? Uh, how do you actually? What is the mainstream uh, Muslim South Korean in, in, in dress code for men there? Because you're mm. talking about the dress code. Well, you know, uh, South Korea is uh, it's a very liberal country, mm-hmm. and we are affected by uh, we have been affected by Western cultures. Yes. So. People actually uh, 
uh, really don't care how other people uh, address. Wow. So, so it's more like a uh, how to say uh, more more open mm-hmm. than the country like uh, Saudi Arabia or yeah. Iran. Mm-hmm. That that kind of yeah, country right. is more open, but but th- there is limits. There is some uh, uh, point that mm-hmm. people will feel, oh, this is kind of sexual. Oh, this is moderate. There is a uh, a point, a limit, but yeah. it's much much uh, more uh, flexible yeah. than uh, other countries. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The most important thing is your intention. True. I mean, even if you wear. Uh, like big clothes and exactly. like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the clothes that uh, socially recognized as, as a moderate clothes mm-hmm. but if your intention is to uh, so, attract other gender than yeah, your you. wife or your husband it is haram mm-hmm. it is not okay for you to wear that dress you should change it yeah to brothers and sisters different. this is a yeah. very good point that brother Lee is actually um putting here and, and laying it down here that if you and see uh, ladies and gentlemen if you're watching this right now if you're a person that actually wearing a thobe the, the dress there a majority of the middle east brothers and sisters uh, brothers are actually wearing sisters not wearing thobe you, they wear abaya if they're actually wearing that but their intention is how brother lee has mentioned is actually you know contradicting their purpose of adorning themselves it's not for the sake of allah in in general then it's a waste. You, you're not actually protecting yourself. You're just throwing yourself into riyah, into, into showing off. Jazakallah khair. That's a very good point. Very, very important point by Brother Lee. So now, about the fashion there, now we know, alhamdulillah, I think, you know, when you walk in South Korea, I hope that one day, inshallah, Allah will ease and bless me to travel to South Korea and meet you there. Or you can come here, definitely. We, ho- we will have you here, definitely. You can come and, and, and give your your um, discourse about about you know the tawheed and how and why it's amazing you know I have thought about the name how and why that's amazing how and why maqasid sharia amazing I think I think you know what we should do we should have this you coming to Malaysia and having you on the show live that will be um, inshallah bi idnillah better what do you think of course okay so now moving on to the, 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 I think uh, the steps that you want to share I think you have a few more steps yeah, it's done okay yeah, the step is done and then uh, now uh, I think uh, uh, it's time for me to share my uh, mistakes that oh. I have done and then uh, the tips uh, that you can uh, use from my mistakes okay cool. so uh, the reason why I know these mm-hmm. uh, steps yeah. and uh, this, uh, you can say you can, uh, this knowledge mm-hmm. is because I have experienced, I have made so many mistakes True. in the past and from the past I, I literally uh, walked with the past, <laughs> wow. walked on the past, uh, I, I mean I'm sorry, walked with mistakes, yeah. walked on, on the mistakes <laughs> And uh, all those mistakes made me mm-hmm. uh, who I am now. Yeah. So uh, from now on, the things that I uh, uh, I am going to tell you mm-hmm. uh, of all from uh, my uh, mistakes mm-hmm. uh, or from my past. Okay. So you, you can you can think uh, this. Uh, 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 the th- things that the uh, things I'm going to uh, share is about me. You can uh, you can even think like that. Okay. So it's amazing. Uh, I uh, prepared uh, four. Uh, number one. Okay. Tip tip number one is a uh, process of learn. So. After you become almost everyone you are going to meet will tell you to uh, or not to mm-hmm. do some, some things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if, even the internet does the same to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 
And you're like a newborn baby. True. You will absorb everything you see and uh, you, you hear, hear like a, a sponge. Yeah, wow. And that, that, that's, a, that's actually natural and, and good thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a good thing. Okay. But sometimes this you know, flood of information messes up your mind. It, it messes up your mind so badly and uh, 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 you don't know what to do. And so uh, in order to survive mm-hmm. uh, out of this uh, flood, yeah. you should set up a process of uh, learning. So first, you should be clear with what sources. So that's basically you're emphasizing to me and all of us Muslims or, or new Muslims to actually uh, attaining, if they want to get something, especially in Islam, uh, they have to uh, attain their, the, the sources of, uh, from an authentic uh, yes, domain. The, authentic. The, source, the source must be authentic. Oh, that, point that, number that's one. by default. Because default. It's point number one, brothers and sisters. If, ladies and gentlemen, if, this is point if, number one. If the source is weak, just throw away. Don't yeah. waste the time. Just throw it. <laughs> so, to be clear with the sources, uh, 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 so, uh, you know, in- information must have source. In our case, in Islamic uh, mm-hmm. knowledge, Islamic tradition, mm-hmm. uh, our uh, most authentic source is from mm-hmm. the Quran. Exactly. If the Quran says so, and you, you, can, you can have it. Uh, well, of course, there's a, there will be a, uh, interpretation and exactly. uh, explanation, but that, yeah. that comes uh, uh, later. Right. But the the saying the, itself, yeah. so it's clear. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the second source is from uh, hadith. So we Rebels. categorize yes. uh, hadith yeah. by the uh, the credibility. Yes. So yeah, you, you you know. It. So number one was the uh, the source, and uh, the second second point is uh, it should be clear with uh, who claims it. Perfect. Who said it? Who? A ah, beautiful way of learning. <laughs> yeah. The, the person who claims that uh, knowledge or information okay. or uh, the, the, the things that person saying could yeah. be order, could be theory, mm-hmm. uh, could be like, like hypothesis, could, could be anything. Um, you know, everybody has different background. Mm-hmm. experience, mm-hmm. different methodology, different depth of knowledge, mm-hmm. and most importantly, credit. Mm-hmm. This is the most important thing, the mm-hmm. credit that the, that person has. If the person is not credible, mm-hmm. his saying mm-hmm. seems uh, okay, but there could be something else. Mm-hmm. So you should be always care about a uh, person's uh, background and the person's methodology. It's really, really important wow. uh, and is a credit. You know, when you say this, you remind me of actually uh, of a very beautiful quote that one of the uh, imma, the four madahib, uh, says, or I think, I believe, uh, I could be wrong, you can correct me, and those who are watching this, you can correct me in the comments below. I think I believe uh, Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said, uh, if you were to seek or if you're going to look and learn ab- about the religion look at the person that you're learning from basically mm-hmm. the background of the person who what is his the way that you you were mentioning the methodology his background and so forth uh, you know and and what is his um his his uh, mindset or the way that he's actually working towards the the knowledge of conveying and so forth you know it's a very beautiful mm-hmm. way of learning subhanallah Thank you. So, uh, the third point, yeah. uh, is the last point, okay. is uh, you should be clear with the context. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to take uh, what it looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, in the Quran, in the Hadith, it, say, it says blah, blah, blah. It says so, and then Do it. And I will take it. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's but, an issue. But everything has context. Everything True. has yeah. a background. Yes. So it, it happens a lot, especially uh, when people uh, study about hadith. Mm. So hadith, uh, even 
the most authentic hadith, which is uh, the Hay series. Mm-hmm. Even then, uh, you should look through the context because hadith doesn't uh, hadith itself, not an uh, interpretation of the hadith. The hadith itself mm-hmm. doesn't tell you the uh, context. Doesn't tell you. Uh, what happened before this incident and what happens later uh, after this incident. Mm. So it, it only show, shows you the very moment of uh, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said or did something. Mm-hmm. So you should always uh, care about the context. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really important. You know, you, you remind me so, of, an, of, a, of a sheikh, uh, sheikh um, Sorry to interrupt on this. Sheikh Bilal Asad from Australia, or Asad from Australia, he um, mentioned about when we were having a workshop about men. There was only men inside. There was no sisters at all. So they were talking about, you know, men, this is your style and so forth. And you find a hadith, uh, you know, you, you throw that hadith to your wife and, and you em- emphasize on the, the layer of the hadith without going, basically not understanding the context and, you know, just because you're a man, you do that. And, you know, that lead to a lot of actually issues with, with between spouses, husband and wives. So it's a very good way of actually uh, understanding. So you've mentioned the first, the second, and uh, you're going to mention the third, right? This is the process of learning that I uh, developed it. So you, you can uh, uh, adopt it, this idea and you can uh, develop it uh, with your own style. You can make it your own, mm-hmm. so it's up to you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the renowned in the history, they all follow a fine structure. They mm-hmm. clarify, uh, clarify their purpose at the beginning, uh-huh. and they explain their uh, method mm-hmm. and uh, the source they use. Yeah. So they always follow this structure, uh-huh. and because of these, uh, because of those uh, pioneering scholars, mm-hmm. now we have deep rooted. Um, broad and dynamic and uh, sophistic, uh, sophisticated Islamic academia. Mm-hmm. So uh, you, should, you should be very proud of, proud of it. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, <laughs> my personal, uh, personal recommendation yeah. is to read books uh, published from uh, one organization called International Institute of Islamic Thoughts. Okay. Uh, so many great scholars, so many great books in there. Professor Ismail Raji al Faroqi mm-hmm. and Sheikh uh, Yusuf al Faradawi mm-hmm. used to publish their books uh, from the Triple IT. There are so many good books. So you can uh, get some help from uh, uh, those books, the Triple IT books. And uh, next tip. Yeah. Next I... tip is uh, it's called Specify slowly, slowly. Oh, specify slowly, do, do, slowly. Do you know what is slowly, slowly? It means like slowly, slowly. Yeah, slowly, slowly. It's, uh, <laughs> it's my own terminology, slowly, okay, slowly. Cool. Uh, it is, uh, you will hear, you will hear it a lot. Mm-hmm. Slowly, slowly, brother. <laughs> step by step. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. But the problem is, they won't explain how slow. <laughs> they they always tell you they always tell you slowly slowly but they don't explain how slow <laughs> you better be specific with your Muslim plan uh, oh, uh, for example nice. uh, alcohol so uh, you some at some point you will quit alcohol <laughs> but at the, in the beginning stage mm-hmm. you don't know how slow people <laughs> say slow slow so many people did like that uh-huh. uh, because they don't know uh, uh, how to uh, make the strategy to uh, uh, form mm-hmm. their Muslim life. So mm-hmm. they just go like that. Yeah. So from day one, day one, uh, uh, five times of uh, prayer every day. Mm-hmm. From day one. No alcohol from day one, no oh. pork from day one, no girlfriend, no boyfriend, something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because they, they, they don't know. People say slowly, slowly, but 
They don't know. They, they don't know how to make those steps. Because the one so, who's saying slowly, slowly is saying bye bye, bye bye. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the issue. That caused some uh, troubles. That's troubles with yourself, uh, with your family, uh -huh. with your friends, with your colleagues. Okay. Especially uh, society like Korea. Yeah. Everybody else around you mm -hmm. are non Muslims. Your family, family are non Muslim. Mm -hmm. They eat pork and they drink alcohol, yeah. and you, Don't you have to be, uh, you have to have dinner together with them. Okay, how do you actually, But, you know, you know, when you became Muslim, and how do you actually, you know, when you're telling this, I want to ask you these questions. Uh, these actually, there's a lot. How do you actually slowly, slowly <laughs> so do that, things? That's why I, from the beginning, yeah. I told you that uh, there's all these things. Yeah. Or from my mistake. Yeah. I did it once. <laughs> I did it once. <laughs> okay, how was the, I mean, basically the reaction when the, um, you know, when you were actually, uh, first, how did they react when you embrace Islam? It was, uh, it, it was, it was horrible. <laughs> so, okay. uh, my, uh, I, One of my biggest mistake mm -hmm. was, uh, yeah, uh, when I became a Muslim, I didn't explain what Islam is and uh, how I want to live uh, as a Muslim to my family. I didn't do that. Okay. The first impression uh, of me being as Muslim that my uh, family got was me not eating pork that was the first impression <laughs> what, what what would they think my, my son yesterday he was okay with eating pork and uh, do this do that and Today? suddenly he just he kept he keeps eating potatoes yeah and they worried so much they worried so much when i uh uh do prayer And uh, when I fast in Ramadan, mm -hmm. they were so much, mm -hmm. and we uh, and we had some troubles. But uh, now uh, it, it, it it's becoming better and better. It is not uh, totally solved yet, yeah, but it's so. better and better. Yeah, because uh, uh, in the middle of my Muslim life, I took different strategy. <laughs> okay. So so you you tried yeah. you had trials and error as well that you were trying to yeah. yeah. Okay, this is I really uh, uh, from uh, in the middle of my Muslim uh, life, I realized uh, my relationship between my uh, me and my family was uh, something uh, wrong, mm -hmm. uh, and I started to establish uh, uh, our relationship from the beginning. I didn't show uh, the, any practice uh, uh, the, the things that you do as a Muslim. Okay. I didn't show any of it in my house. Islam is right, and uh, I, I, I will. I, I want to go to you know uh, take a trip to other country like Islamic countries. But don't worry, Islam is this, Islam is that, and so, something like that. that okay. That's slow. Wow. You know when 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 you mentioned that about uh, you try to rectify again uh, or and, and the mistakes that you've done uh, in terms and you said that you want to be that you became. A son to, for the family again, uh, in terms of the you know the food and drinking and so forth. How do you actually, when you know the mistakes, how do you actually work about that? Oh, so <coughs> oh, excuse me. So my strategy at uh, that time, not yeah. now, that yeah. time was uh, I eat anything that my family gives to me in my house. Wow. Literally anything, anything. My, if my family give like oh, a pork, beef, chicken, anything, I eat in my house. But when I was outside of my house, you don't. I, I don't have to. Uh, yeah, I don't have to uh, like worry about my family. So uh, outside of my house, I don't eat pork and alcohol. Uh, I was uh, totally uh, open to my uh, colleagues mm -hmm. uh, in a uh, previous workplace. Mm -hmm. that I. Uh, rebuild myself as a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I don't. I told them I don't eat pork. I don't drink. Uh, I don't drink alcohol. So when we go uh, social mingling, 
uh, I, I will be there, but I will not eat pork or uh, alcohol. alcohol. And I, I did like that. And it was totally okay. They, they were uh, good people. They uh, fully understood that. Mm -hmm. But when I was in my house, uh -huh. I behaved like this uh, uh, normal Korean. Like, behave like a Korean, but think like a Muslim. Wow. So, uh, you know, like uh, uh, clean the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, for, uh, for my parents and uh, washing the dishes, mm -hmm. something like that. That you, yeah. uh, the, the little things that you can do yeah. <laughs> to make your image better. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, there are two more tips, and these uh, tips are uh, also from my mistakes. So, uh, I will go through mm -hmm. the rest of my tips and then I will share more. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, specify slowly, slowly. So, you can, uh, uh, for, for example, like a uh, quitting pork. Mm -hmm. If you uh, have uh, eaten pork, all the time, all day, mm -hmm. and you can reduce it uh, like uh, uh, not eating pork once a week for a month. And next month, you just uh, expand it to like twice a week. So Inshallah. two days a week, you don't eat pork, something like that. So it's actually up to you. Uh, it's up to your capability. But anyway, you really have to set uh, steps and strategy. And it gives you a feeling of like achievement, True. and you can be yeah, you can be very proud of yourself. <clears throat> and uh, actually, even if you uh, drink or eat pork or uh, did something uh, haram things, because you were so tempted, but that's just the progress. It's the middle of the progress. So uh, I, I want. To, to think, uh, I, uh, no, I want you uh, not to be so worried. Yeah. So uh, don't worry. So don't too much burden yourself. It's just progress. Uh, the important thing is not uh, what to do now, because uh, <clears throat> our Muslim life ends uh, when we die, not like. Like one in one or two years, you're not going to quit your Muslim life in one or two years. True. You're going to have it forever. Allah. So, because your uh, final test ends when you die, True. not now. I don't mean that we we can do uh, anything we want now and then exactly. we repent later. I, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying it's uh, be social, um, be who you are. Uh, you know, change is not bad thing. It's, it's not bad thing, mm -hmm. but there are some people so obsessed with change. They change their lifestyle, their friends, their name, their clothes, or pretty much everything. Yeah. Then, then they don't look like local people in the end. Yeah, that's an issue as well. Yeah. That's an so, issue. I know some uh, guys, like, you know, like a, a man with jeans and shirts, and certainly became a Punjabi guy. Yeah, that's really not, uh, it's not a piece of cake. It's not easy for actually people to, from the local, yeah. to actually interact. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if, if he wants to be like a Punjabi, it's okay. It's, anyway, it's Punjabi, his choice. Man. His, his, his choice is uh, he's free to do so. Yeah, he but, uh, but what I'm saying is he has become a Muslim, not True. Pakistani. Exactly. So, yeah, that, 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 that's the point. So he is still the same person, actually. Mm -hmm. He's the same person. His family is still there. His friends, uh, maybe his job is still there. Um, Becoming Muslim doesn't mean that you must give up everything you had before. True. No. no. Yeah. So 
uh, you are still part of your family, it's still part of uh, the society. So uh, I really uh, uh, want you to um, so, uh, do not isolate yourself. That's it. So That's mingle with your friends, talk to your family, mm-hmm. you know, be social. Just, uh, just be yourself. You know, a lone wolf. Yeah. Yeah. yeah don't be a, a lone, lone wolf. wolf. I mean, even a wolf has a friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I definitely uh, think uh, that I had to change myself. Exactly. That was my idea. Yeah. But now, uh, after uh, time passed, now I think it's more like a uh, discovering or recovering who you truly are, mm-hmm. the true nature that God planted in you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't harsh yourself. Take it easy. Just uh, be yourself. Uh, exactly. Know your fitra yeah, exactly. and live righteously. Yeah. Uh, I mean, fitra of every humankind is uh, is a being as Muslim. I mean, exactly. Uh, exactly. Everyone is born as Muslim, yeah. innocent. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. You are a Muslim, not uh, uh, a person of a certain uh, uh, region, like Arab or uh, South Asia or exactly. Africa or America. So. Yeah. I remember, uh, I remember, hmm. I remember a verse where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al Hujurat that uh, the best amongst you in the Akramakum عند Allah that the best amongst you or the the one that Allah looks upon is the one who has more taqwa in the Akramakum عند Allah. He exactly, exactly. Kum, not beard or you know you know believe me if there are sisters who also wear niqab that backbites, there are people hmm. who are who no, dressed I... they look they're so Islamic but. They, they slander, they cheat, they mock, they don't take care of their neighbors, and so forth. But actually, we're not emphasizing that you shouldn't have beard, you shouldn't have, uh, you shouldn't wear uh, dress properly. You should dress properly, but have the manners. The akhlaq mm. is more important. Because w- when a person has akhlaq, has the mannerism, definitely the person will dress properly. Definitely. It's, mm. con- it's contradicting. You cannot have uh, a, a good heart with a bad cloth, or a bad cloth with a devil heart this thing has to go together right the mm. mind will the mind will definitely say hey uh, you're not supposed to be wearing this this is wrong this is causing uh, people will get distracted okay, so uh, the last point yeah uh, I want to uh, share uh, uh, my tips for my new Muslim brothers and sisters mm-hmm. so uh, you should always rem- remember that you are a Muslim not Islam. Mm-hmm. You're a Muslim, not Islam. So sometimes you might have arguments with people mm-hmm. and you want to defend Islam. Mm-hmm. But in many cases, you're not defending Islam, but yourself. Wow. So uh, you, you may want to prove that what you learn from Islam is not wrong. So you want to prove Islam is true. Mm-hmm. And uh, you want to prove it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, Islam is not wrong. Islam is right. But you, you. Muslim, could be wrong. Wow. That mm, is many times. Deep. Man. That so, is deep. No, we, we, we are humans. So uh, nobody is perfect. Even scholars can be wrong. Exactly. Uh, you, know, you know, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be wrong and knows all the answers of all the questions. Uh, exactly. That's why we say uh, Allah knows best. The moment a conversation trans- transforms into an argument is uh, the moment when you think you Smart. can't be wrong. Wow. I think, so, we should, I think we should take this quote right now and put it inside uh, <laughs> and post it. This is beautiful. <laughs> Can you see that again? So, so uh, 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 the moment a conversation trans- transforms into an argument okay. is when you think you cannot be wrong. Deep. But the truth is, you always can be wrong. 
Anytime. Anytime. So remember, you are a Muslim, not Islam. You're not system. You are a, a follower of the system who has free will, who has limited intellect. So you can be uh, wrong anytime. So be humble. Uh, don't turn don't turn a conversation to an argument. argument. Amazing. So uh, so th these uh, these are the last uh, uh, tips I want to share with you guys. Just, yeah, so, so we are one big family. Uh, our, yeah, we are one big family. I was uh, really happy. It was so uh, precious moments. Uh, uh, I'll be really happy if you uh, call me again to your show. Definitely, I'll, I'll be inshallah, really happy. Inshallah, inshallah. 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 We should yeah. have him uh, again. Yeah. We should uh, maybe next time you guys Sorry. visit South Korea, uh, make a video. Of course, uh, of course I'll, I'll be I'll... your, I'll be a personal tour guide. Oh, awesome. uh, very humble. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, I'm a I'm a fan of food. Actually, I love food. So, um, I'm a beef eater. I'm a meat eater, mm. a mutton eater. Uh, uh, fish, yes, of course, I love fish as well. But uh, chicken, no. So, anything beef? <laughs> Just call me. Ah, uh, any beef? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I okay. Well, so, okay. Uh, may Allah protect all of us and I mean, I mean, help us Allah go I mean. through this hard time and bless us. In month of Ramadan, I mean, Jazakum uh, Hope to see you again soon, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, so, thank you so much uh, for inviting me to your show. Ma'asalam. Ma'asalam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a wrap up, brothers and sisters. Today, Brother Lee has just shared not his thoughts, but his life. The things that, and I would say personally, he shared his life with me. Man, he should get a Good wife for him. Make dua for the for this brother Lee. Drop your comments below. Share your thoughts. Share your whatever you want to share below the comment box. And do not forget to subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.